<coughs> Hello. So, this video I'm going to show you how to create graphics or draw or something. Okay, with the Java Swing. So I'm going to create a new project. Say Java Graphics. <coughs> All right. So create a new class. So if I want to draw something now, we we'll create a class name. Uh, let's say draw polygon. So I'm going to draw a polygon. So now when we draw something, we need to draw it on a panel. So I'm going to make this class as a panel, so that's a J panel. And then we need to import this. All right, so now let's think about polygon. So, so I need to create a method. Okay, this method has to deal with the drawing here. So we used a method name paint, okay, and this method has parameters named graphics, which which is a class that we're going to, to import in graphics import from Java AWT, and paint is just like a main, but this paint is going to paint. Instead of writing, we can paint. So, like basic is you can draw something like draw an oval. If I draw an oval, so this is just like starting point where you want to start, right? X and Y coordinates. And for an oval, we talk about the width, okay? The width or the if you talk about circles pretty much eight diameters okay and this is gonna be both like by diameters for the horizontally and vertically like x and y width and height something like that like me let me show you so for example I have pin here I'm gonna create a new class and this new class need to instantiate the object which is draw polygons. So I'm gonna name draw polygon and this we need a main this can run and we name it as the demo so this is a driver class. Right, so let me drag it to the right, then we can see them side by side. So I need to create a frame, okay? Frame equals to new J frame. So this is just another way instead of extend J frame, you can instantiate them too. Now, another way to create GUI. After that, we need to pretty much just say frame dot right add, and we can add the new panel, which is the door polygon. So I just instantiate a new panel right there as the parameters pass into the frame to add that drawing object. Now make sure that you set the same to be visible. Then we can see and set it to true that's really fine frame dot set okay set we spoke to true just we spoke. All right. So now we need to do the dimension, right? So set. You can do set size. Okay. So new dimension and width and height. So let me do 300 by 300. We need to import this in. 
so let's see what we get. Let's run this. So I just got an auto. Like I said, this is starting from 0 to 0. And width 50, height 50. So if I change width to 150, we can just look at an oval. So let me put its starting point down a little bit instead of at the corner. So let's rerun this. See, it's going to shift down a little bit, 10 and 10. And this is the width 150, height 50. That's an oval. So this is how you draw. You have an access to the rectangle and so on. There's so many of them. But I want to use <coughs> polygon. Okay. So polygon is pretty much a class. I'm gonna call P equals to new polygon. Okay, when you want to draw any guns, like any shapes, the shapes with different guns, four sizes, five sizes, like pin, the hexa, guns, okay, or even just regular square, okay, which now you need to set something on the P, okay, and this is an array, so you can pretty much just draw something it depends like sometimes you can also use without an array like let me show you some sample code here like the commenting part here is pretty much showing you if you use the x points y points you can have an array of the points Okay, which I can set the four points. Right, so this is starting zero and zero. Right, and this is your x, x zero, y zero. Right, starting at zero, zero and x one, y one, x two, y two, x three, y three, and pretty much this is like drawing a rectangle okay which looks like a square right so with dot draw polygon and then I set x points y points and put four as a size so let me show you how this thing works first okay all right so and we just do dot draw polygons and pass x point y points. I didn't use any polygon class yet in this case. If I use an array set like that to draw the polygons. So I got it like that. This is where zero zero is. Zero one hundred. Right. And this is one hundred one hundred. And this is one and zero. Alright, so Zero, 100. This is my zero, 100 on the Y. And this is 100 and 0 on the X. Right here. Alright, so now that's how draw polygon works. But another one, we didn't want to use draw polygon like that as an array. So we can actually draw the points, okay? But if you want to draw a point, it's going to be a little different. Like, you can set up the loops, right? And then you can add the points. Like, keep drawing, okay? Like, this loop pretty much telling me that I initialize it to start from minus 100. Because I'm talking about, I can look at map like graphs. To the left side of the graph is negative and to the right side is positive. So <coughs> if I draw from minus 100, it should starting at minus 100 points. And it's going to keep increasing. Okay, that's why I keep increasing it by 200. Okay, 
okay so that's my x points right and this is my y points so they have x and y pretty much drawing points by points okay increase to it's less than equals to 100 and I just draw the polygons now we're not going to worry about scaling factor at this point let's see what we get <coughs> so if I just say p dot right at points right by using polygon p dot at point and this is going to be x and y point so x let's say I'm going to add 100 let's say if I want to start from minus 100 to so that's a point right so let's see we are gonna need to do g dot right do our polygon and pass the p points in so that's one point you may not really see it because it's just one point so now let's start to do the loop okay x equals to initialize that minus 100 and last stand x greater than 100 I mean if it's less than 100 we still need to do and you are just going to increase your x by plus plus I need to color in x so I'm going to say x and this is your y so if I make y stay as 100 <coughs> yeah let's do just 10 so this is like I'm drawing a horizontal line like that right all the way and I can shift down to 100 then it's going to make it going down right there because y is 100 right if i increasing it to the size of my dimensions with 300 let's take with 300 so it should draw a line crossed like that if i want to be in the middle so this has to be 150 so that's how we draw this right okay so it seems like this not coming as middle because we have the title bar right there so maybe just about 120 okay now if you want to draw a vertical line so it's pretty much the same here right but instead of using x we can deal with your y now, right? So y goes to the location that you want to start. So let me say 0 and y less than equals to 300 y plus plus. And this is going to be y, which this one can start from 0 to, right? And of course, I mean, x stays the same. So maybe add half, which is 150. And this is y is the one which changes. So let's run and see what happens. Okay, so we have some line cross like that. Okay. But <coughs> during door the polygons, at the end, see, we see like we get these two diagonal lines too. Okay, so let's figure out how do we get that. Okay, so the reason we get something like this to lines because we happen to mix between the 
vertical line and I mean horizontal line and vertical line here. So if I just do the horizontal line by cell, okay, so that should do. Now if I happen to do just a vert vertical line by cell, okay, it should also just do the vertical line as I run it. So let me do it one more time. Like that, right? So the mix between those two, the behavior is going to be different because the P, okay, because the P. So now, if I try to draw it, okay, let's see if I try to draw this. So I finish drawing that and. If you're repeating that again, so that's that behavior is going to reflect some layers that like you repeat doing that again here. So which that's why we just have a strange behaviors coming out, which is like that. Then if you want to draw a line cross like that, I would recommend you to use G dot. They have door line like that and then you can just specify your x y starting point and any points like zero right x start with let's say not zero let's say we do 150 right in the middle and y start from zero and x to 150 and to 300 so that, okay, I'm going to pretty much just delete this out. And this also, we don't need it. Delete it out. Uh, we might want to draw a parabola or any graphs between that. If you just vary x and y. Okay, like, let's say, uh, I'm going to do, throw in some number here. Just, just just randomly generate a graph here. Okay. So drawing something like x one hundred minus y and y could be y plus one hundred. Something like that. Now I want to draw an this is a vertical line, and I want to draw a horizontal line. Okay, so and then just plot the, plot the graph by using this P polygon here and look it. So this should be zero and let's say one twenty and three hundred and. 120. Okay, so before I want to do anything, I'm going to comment this out just to check that I get the graphs for that. There you go. The graphs with x and y axis vertical and horizontally crossed from this two. Like I said, if you do the draw line, you're not going to see the weird like that and expected lines. So now let's run this. Adding the product line. So this is just like line that I to add here. So we get some line here. Now from here you can plot any line. It can be a sine, graph, a parabola and anything else. So thank you for watching.